Having just watched the Final Fantasy VII 25th anniversary celebration broadcast, I think we can be pretty happy with what we got. Not only did we get a reveal trailer for the return of Crisis Core, which will be available this winter, but we also got an announcement trailer for the next installment in the remake series, titled Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which will be dropping the winter after that. Coupled with the fact that Final Fantasy XVI is also slated for release in 2023, I think it's safe to say that us Final Fantasy fans will be eating well in the near future. But that doesn't stop us from gobbling up all these delicious breadcrumbs we got from the trailers. In this video, we will be helping you digest some of those breadcrumbs by comparing the Japanese and the English versions of the new Rebirth trailer, featuring the official English subtitles at the top, the Japanese subtitles below that, and then at the very bottom we will have a more direct translation of the Japanese dialogue. We'll start off just by playing the trailer with all the subtitles together, so that you can see it all in action, and then we'll end the video with a discussion of some of the interesting parts and trailer analysis. But anyway, I'm Nurku from Birds of Play, and if you end up liking the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that we can bear witness to what is shaping up to become the next golden age of the Final Fantasy series together. I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> あの日の続きを始めたんだ。ジェノバと共にこの星を取り戻して支配者になるとかいう計画の続きを。あの日、もう手遅れだと思った。それって私を疑ってるの？あの時とは別人じゃないか？ So that was the trailer, which at the very least is a lovely little status update regarding the game, telling us it will be ready next winter, meaning the winter after this one which is when we will be reunited with Crisis Core. In the broadcast itself, Yoshinori Kitase also confirmed that the remake series is planned as a trilogy, with Remake being the first game, Rebirth the second, and lastly, we will have an entry which name hasn't been announced yet, but this still gives us a much better understanding of what we can expect from the time frame and the structure of the Remake project as a whole, which is highly appreciated but now, onto the trailer and the Japanese stuff. So the first two lines in the Japanese trailer are quite different from the English version, seemingly talking about how certain emotions like sadness and anger can make people strong, and Aerith, in this case, is specifically talking about themselves, but she also says that these emotions can end up changing them. In contrast to the English lines, the Japanese lines feel a lot more personal, while the English version seems more preoccupied with focusing on the sort of meta-commentary, telling us that we can't change the past, that we can't change the future, just like Final Fantasy VII Remake can be its own thing, even though the original Final Fantasy VII doesn't change. The next line in Japanese does also give us this meta-vibe, but it does it with just one line of dialogue instead of three. The next thing I wanted to mention is how the Japanese and the English versions reference the world of the game in different ways. The English version saying the planet, while the Japanese version mentions this planet. The Japanese version uses the word Hoshi, which most often means star, but can also mean a planet. But the interesting thing is that it usually isn't used about the planet Earth, for example. So using it especially with the Kono Hoshi, or this planet, has the nuance of acknowledging other stars or planets in a way that doesn't describe their own planet as something uniquely unique. Which feels a bit fitting considering the concept of the live stream and how a foreign or extraterrestrial life force such as Genova can influence it. Not to mention other instances of migrating life energy in the Final Fantasy VII compilation or just the Final Fantasy series in general. So yeah, this planet, not the planet. Which do you prefer? So again with the screen text, 
Here I feel like the Japanese version doesn't only reference the concept of Sephiroth's goals, as in what is his endgame or where is he headed, but also and perhaps more obviously, the actual physical nature of his mission, as in where is he actually going, to what place. Of course I don't know, but this might be a reference to the party chasing Sephiroth, as they did in the original game, all the way to the reunion in the north. What do you think? Lastly, in terms of the translation, I want to look at this line. So in the English version, you can sort of tell by the performance or the voice acting that Cloud is sort of surprised by his own memories or that he's coming to some sort of realization. So it's maybe like the scene in the original Final Fantasy VII when you get the sack flashback or something. However, it seems much clearer to me in the Japanese version, not only in terms of the performance, but also just grammatically, that this is some sort of revelation for Cloud, as he is posing the question to make sure it really represents the truth of the matter. So that's it for the Japanese-English comparison analysis. You're of course free to make your own judgments based on the subtitles provided, and I hope you'll share them with all of us down in the comments below. Before I end the video, however, I want to say a few words about the trailer. Well, I basically just want to say this. Look at that. Cloud can apparently jump over obstacles now, and that makes me way more excited than it has any business doing. But anyway, I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Final Fantasy if you haven't already, and tell us what you thought of the trailer. See you next time. Caw -caw.